I've been starting to connect with everybody more. It's just been amazing for me to start to get to know everybody on a deeper level. And so we're just excited that we're open and that we're here and that God is here in our midst. And last week we started this brand new uh, sermon series called I Am. If you're with us, you know we started this series and we're going through the I am statements that Jesus makes in the book of John. So last week we had our first I am statement and the I am statement we had last week is Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And what we talked about is how Jesus is the sustenance that our soul needs. Jesus is the sustenance that we desperately are looking for. That's who Jesus is is and today we're going to go into our next I am statement that Jesus said and this is in John chapter 8 verse 12 and this is what it says again Jesus spoke to them saying I am the light of the world whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life now I don't know if anyone here is afraid of the dark I don't know if you are maybe when I was a kid though I was so scared of the dark. I remember when I, when I, would, I was living in, in, in the basement and every time I'd come up the stairs, I would run as fast as I could up the stairs. Like there's times where I'm tripping, I'm falling, and I'm just like desperately trying to run up the stairs. And I don't know if you know the stairs that you can see through so you can like see back into the basement. Those were the scariest stairs, right? Because I'm like for sure my brother or somebody's going to be there and they're going to grab my leg and I'm going to fall. And so I just somehow knew that if I could only get from the basement to the main floor, I was going to be okay. I just somehow knew if I could get away from the darkness into the light, I was going to be okay. So I would do everything that I could to try and get from the basement to the front and to this day I've never had my legs pulled going up the stairs not one time it's never happened because of how fast I am going up the stairs I've gotten quick at going up the stairs but I don't know maybe, maybe for some of us I think the darkness is scary and we're not just talking I think just about physical darkness I think for a lot of us even the spiritual darkness that some of us face some of us, the, the darkness that we feel on the inside of us, the, the things in our, inside of us that we're trying to keep in the dark, does not let the light shine. I think some of us, the darkness is scary. For some of us, it's the darkness again inside. Sometimes it's the darkness in our family, the darkness that surrounds us, the darkness in our home, whatever it is. For some of us, the darkness is so tangible and so real. But all that darkness is is the absence of light. All the darkness is, is the absence of light. So when light enters a dark space, darkness disappears. Because light has entered the room. And this is what Jesus is saying in this moment. He's saying, I am the light of the word. Where I go, darkness cannot exist. Because light and darkness cannot coexist in the same space. So when Jesus enters a heart, when Jesus enters a room, when Jesus enters something, the darkness trembles. Because light has entered the room. The light is in the room. Jesus here says, I am the light of the world. The light will take over. Where Jesus is, darkness cannot exist. And, and as it was with last week, the, the, the context of the statement is everything. And so today we're going to go through John chapter 8. There's this incredible story of Jesus that we're going to go through. So John 8, if you have your Bible, you can turn with me there. We're going to be in this the whole time. It says this. John 8 verse 1, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placing her in the midst. So Jesus, as he does, he's teaching to a group of people and it's interesting when you read the Bible, when Jesus is teaching to a group, something always happens. Like something always happens, either everybody's hungry and he needs to feed them, or they bring a woman to him who's caught in the midst of adultery. She's most likely naked, brought into the space in public. She's this lady, she's caught by herself somehow in adultery and placed in front of people. And they, 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 they don't, Jesus is just teaching people. It'd be like me, right now we're teaching, we're having this conversation, and all of a sudden people come in and they bring in this person who's caught in, in doing something wrong, and they bring her, bring her into this space. For her, this must have been one of the most humiliating situations of her entire life. Right, she, she looks at herself, she's most likely naked in front of all these people. She's alone. She might be cold. She's feeling ashamed, she's feeling guilty. 
And she's sitting there by herself, surrounded by crowds, staring at her, knowing what she had just done. And for us, you know, when we step into a moment where we make a mistake or we, or we sin, imagine in that moment, in that exact moment, being brought out in front of people. People see you for who you really are. The most broken part of who you are. That's where this woman finds herself. And they said to him, in verse 4, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the, in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman. So what should we do? What do you say we do? She's sitting there, humiliated, and they say, we're supposed to stone this woman. We're supposed to kill her right now on the spot, according to the law. What do you say we do? Now the law that they're talking about, uh, that, that we are commanded to live by, that they're saying about this woman, he, he, she says, this law, what do you say we do? Now, this is a tough situation, right? Because Jesus finds himself, he's just teaching, and all of a sudden, this woman's brought, they say, hey, we're about to kill this woman, what should we do? And this is a tough moment for, this, this, for Jesus, he's just sitting there, teaching, and all of a sudden, boom, we're going to kill this woman. And, and Jesus, he's, he's just sitting there, and this is what happens, and there's three things from this story that I think will help us, and help us understand what Jesus means when he says, I am the light of the world. My first thought today is this, is that the law reveals my guilt. And this, this is exactly what happened. The law that these religious leaders are talking about is referring to the Mosaic law or the law of Moses. And there's a, it consists of upwards of 613 laws that these people were trying to live by. Trying daily to try and live by. The, the, this is what they were required to live by. And this, this law reveals our guilt. It revealed their guilt. It revealed all the things that they, they, they were supposed to be doing that they weren't able to live up to. This is what the law does. It reveals our guilt. The law of Moses is, is, is a law given by God before Jesus came to die in our place. This is a law that, that, that before Jesus came, that Jesus came to fulfill it. Before Jesus came to take the guilt for us, this is the law that existed. This law. Upwards of 613 things that you know, we're supposed to live by moral laws and laws about sexuality and so many different laws, what you're supposed to wear, what you're supposed to look like, all these things. And when we look at this law, when we look at it, there's no way that we as human beings can live up to it. There's no way that we as humans can actually live up to this law. The law reveals our guilt. This woman, right, she's found guilty in this moment. The law says we should stone her. This is what the law says. We should kill this woman right now for what she has done. So she's sitting there humiliated publicly. She's guilty according to the law, no question, preparing herself to die. That's where she finds herself. You know, if we truly want to experience God and his grace, we first need to realize how broken we are. We first need to realize that we're actually not okay. By ourselves, We actually have to realize that we are sinners. We are broken. We are guilty. And the law proves this, right? The law always reveals our guilt. The law is like looking in a mirror and all we see are the things that we're supposed to be that we can't live up to. How hard is that? When we, when we see what we want to do, we see who we want to be and we look on the inside, we're not who we want to be. We're doing things that we wish we weren't doing. We're saying things that we wish we wouldn't say. We're treating our kids a way that we wish we weren't treating them. We're treating our spouse a way that we wish we weren't treating them. We look at the law and we say, I'm not good enough. This is this, is this woman, she finds herself realizing, I'm not good enough. I'm broken. And according to the law, she deserved to be stoned and killed on the spot. But this story changes right here. Verse 6. This they said to test him, that they might be able to charge to bring against him. So Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them this powerful line. Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. You know, we don't know what Jesus wrote on the ground. We, we don't fully know. There's a lot of different opinions and thoughts now, some scholars believe that Jesus was actually writing the sins of the people who were about to throw these stones. So can you imagine you're, you're in this moment, and all of a sudden some guy starts writing in the ground, and he's like writing the sins that you've just committed, and you're like, whoa. 
Some people believe that. Other people, they believe that that Jesus was actually writing the names of the people, of the people, I don't want to call them stoners, but like the people about to throw stones. Um, we don't want to, but those people, he's, some people believe they're writing the names of these people from the oldest to the youngest. We don't know what he was writing, but what we do know is that whatever Jesus wrote in this dirt changed everything for them. It had such a huge impact on these men that they dropped their stones and they left. Whatever Jesus wrote in the dirt, whatever it was, had such a huge impact on these people that they dropped their stones and they left. We can read it right here. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground, but when they heard it, they went away one by one, one at a time. Beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with this woman standing before him. So now... Everyone's gone. It's just Jesus and this woman. The woman who thought her life was over. The, the, the woman who the law had revealed her guilt. This woman was now sitting at the feet of her Savior. The man who just saved her from dying. Literally dying. This man, whatever he wrote, changed this woman's life. Verse 10 says this. Jesus stood up and said to her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Sin no more. Thought two today, number one was the law reveals my guilt, but number two is the love reveals his grace. The law reveals our guilt all the time, but guess what? His love, it actually changes us from the inside out. His grace comes in and washes away everything, and he's, we're standing there in the midst of our most broken moment, and he's saying, where are they? Where are the ones who are accusing you? Where are the ones who found you? Where are they? She says, they're not here. They left. She's alone with Jesus in this moment. No one, Lord. The love always reveals his grace. The law shows our need for a savior right now in this moment. You know, whoa, like this is the statement. Where are your accusers? Where are the ones who condemned you? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one. No one is accusing me anymore. Not even God. I am free. My guilt is gone. My shame is gone. I am free. The love that Jesus showed this woman in this moment revealed God's grace so powerfully. That God's grace overcomes our guilt. God's grace. The grace that says, I came to fulfill the law. I came to set the captives free. I came to break addiction. I came to break bondage. I came to free you. That's the grace that Jesus showed this woman in this moment, that his love revealed his grace for us. And then Jesus, we get this urgency from him, and he says this, go and sin no more. You know, we, he doesn't say, hey, go home and try your best. Like, try your best to sin no more. Like, I know it's going to be hard. He, he doesn't say, you know, take a few days, figure it out. He says, go and sin no more. Because his grace is so sufficient for us. His grace will sustain us. His grace for us is so much more powerful than the guilt of the law. Because he says, I love you so much. And this is before Jesus even died, right? Like, this is before he, he had died on the cross. He says, my grace is so sufficient for you. Go and sin no more. Don't take a couple days to pray about it. He says, go and do it. There's some things that we don't really need to pray about anymore. Like, whether or not we should do this thing. He's saying, no, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. It's over. I have set you free. The bondage that you had, those chains, are now broken. That's what Jesus does for us every single day, every single moment. Go now and sin no more. I know we all have accusers, right? We all have people who look at us and tell us that we're not good. We always have people who look at us and accuse us of things. You know, the enemy, he's the greatest accuser. He accuses us of so many things. Because he doesn't want us to experience the grace that Jesus has for us. He does his best to, to, step, to step in and try and get in the way of the grace. He says, here's all the guilt. Here's all the shame. And Jesus says, here's all my grace. My grace is more powerful than that guilt. 
I know some of us, we're, we're in this place, we're, we're in this place where we're looking around and all we see is our accusers. All we see are our flaws. All we see are the things that we wish we were. All we see is the way we wish our life was going. And we're just surrounded by darkness. This woman, she found herself, darkness surrounding her, the most humiliating moment of her life. She was surrounded by the darkness. She was surrounded by the brokenness. When she looked in the mirror, all she would have saw was the broken parts of who she was. All we see is the sinner we are. All we see is the, the guilt. But his grace is sufficient for you. His love, his peace, his joy is so sufficient for you. If only we could taste and see that he is good. His love removes darkness from the room. You know, you know when, when Jesus enters, darkness trembles. Darkness doesn't, can't stick around when Jesus is present. Darkness vanishes when Jesus enters the room. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've even been caught doing. It doesn't matter why. Because of grace. Jesus loves you so much that he took that guilt, he took that shame that we deserved, and he took the law and took the punishment for us so we could walk free from shame and free from sin in Jesus' name. So we can have eternal life with him. You know, Jesus moves us from the darkness of our past to the light of our future. Some of our past are so dark. When you look at your past, all you, you can barely see it. That's how dark it is. And we, we continue to live in the darkness because that's where we believe we were created to live because of what happened to us, because of what we've done. And Jesus is trying to say, it's, I'm tired of you in the darkness. Move into the light. That's what Jesus has for all of us. Which we need to stop living in the darkness and step into the light. It's way easier to live in the light than the darkness. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. There's just love and grace. He literally moves us from death. This woman, right? She was ready to die. And Jesus moved her from death to life. From death to life. Death to sin and to the law to alive in him. We need to move from darkness to light. And then right after this verse, right after Jesus says, go and sin no more, this is where we get this I am statement. So powerful. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, right after this, Go and sin no more. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life. Darkness leads to death. Light leads to life. That's what God has for us. So thought three today is the light reveals my hope. The light reveals my hope. We need to move from darkness to light. Some of us in here tonight, as we've talked a little bit about, we can't seem to get past the darkness in our past. We can't seem to step out of the darkness, to step out of the abuse, to step out of the trauma, to step out of the decisions, to step out of it. You know what that's like? And this is what it feels like. It almost feels like you've been buried. And we just can't get out. We're so stuck. And Jesus comes in and he says, hey, I'm moving you today. Your past cannot control you anymore. Your dark, the darkness cannot be present when Jesus walks in the room. When Jesus walks into your life. You see this in the story of the adulterous woman. And we see this story and we just see ourselves. We see ourselves as full of shame. Full of guilt. We feel so broken. We feel so humiliated with the things that have happened to us. Sometimes it's based on the decisions we made, right? We, we look at our decisions, we're like, whoa, I wish I didn't do that. And we still deal with the consequence. We're starting to believe the lies that the enemy, or we're starting to feel the shame that he tries to, to show us. And we, start, we feel like we're choking in the darkness. We feel our future belongs in the darkness because that's all we see. Right? When you're surrounded by darkness, that's all you can see. It doesn't matter what's in front of you, you cannot see it. Because what we focus on, we will see. I remember when I was younger, my mom, she would always 
remember these movies she had watched as a child or as a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult. And then she said, let's watch this movie together. We're like, all right. And then as soon as the movie started, she started to notice the things that we weren't supposed to watch. She started to notice the language that was being said that she didn't notice before. And she had to turn an awful lot of movies. Right? Because movies in the 80s were different. And she didn't remember that part. So when she's watching these movies, with us, she's like, okay, that's enough. We're putting on uh, Bambi now. Like, you know. Because why? Because that's what she was paying attention for. That's what she was looking for. If we're, if, if we're looking for darkness, I'm going to tell you right now, what you're going to find is darkness. If you're looking for the dark, that's what you will find. So what we focus on, if all we focus on is our sin, if all we focus on is our brokenness, is our, is our trauma, is our past, that's where we'll live. But Jesus is saying, bro, like, that's not where I created you to live. I didn't create you to live in that darkness. I created you to live in the light. Stop pursuing the darkness and pursue me. Pursue the light because I am the light of the world. Pursue me. Pursue me with all that you are what i picture is i picture us myself i picture myself in a in a big pit and i'm it's dark i can't see and i'm scrambling to try and get out i can't get out and i feel like there's no hope and then all of a sudden a rope gets thrown into the pit and i climb out and jesus is standing there and he's saying hey i'm right here Jesus, Jesus says, follow me. And you will never be stuck in that darkness again. I'm the light of the world. We feel like there's no way out. We need a reminder sometimes of our guilt, and, but also, more importantly, how much Jesus has done for us. Hope in Jesus to rescue us. Hope that Jesus will lead us into the light. But the problem is, we actually have to grab that rope. Like, we, like some of us, we're so comfortable in the darkness, that's where we want to be. Because we're so comfy. Even though it's hard, even though it sucks, even though it's painful, that's where we're comfortable. We don't, we're not comfortable in the light. Because what happens is the light exposes things too, right? We can't hide stuff in the darkness. I remember you play hide and seek, right? You hide in the light, you're going to be found got to hide somewhere where it's dark so one can find you it's so easy to hide in the darkness it's so hard to hide in the light we have to grab that rope we have to step out of that pit that we are surround that we just see surrounding us because our hope cannot be found in anything other than jesus right because everything else will fade away eventually your finances will fade away eventually you know we might lose everything that we put our hope in. And when we find out that we've lost everything, we realize our hope was in the wrong thing. Right? If our hope is in our finances, in our job, in our education, in our family, whatever it is, when we, when we see that that vanishes, then we're left with nothing. We can lose everything, but if we have Jesus, we can still have hope. We can still have hope. So easy to hide in the darkness, and the, the, it reveals, the light reveals what was hidden in the darkness. It reveals the things we tried to hide for our whole life. But when the light comes in, those things can no longer control you. Your trauma can no longer control you. The pain, the brokenness, the sin can no longer control you. Why? Because the light reveals my hope. Our hope is found in him, nothing else. Our hope is found in him. Let's stop hiding and let's start living. Let's stop hiding in the darkness. Let's start living in the light because it's a whole lot easier. You know, it might be painful when some of the things are revealed. It might be painful when people actually start to see the real you, the things that are broken, the hard parts. But that's when we're going to find the beauty of human connection. That's when we're going to find healing is when things are brought into the light.
And I don't know if some of us, we've gone through this journey of faith for so long, and sometimes we feel like we have hope, right? We have this flashlight, and we're going through life, and all of a sudden, the batteries die. We're like, whoa, now what do I do? <laughs> you know, Jesus is saying, man, I'm so, my light is so much more powerful than a little flashlight. The hope that we can find in him is so beautiful and so beautiful and so amazing. I'm going to invite the, the music team to come up here. We're going to sing a last song together. But, you know, some of us, we've been in the darkness for so long. Our soul has been surrounded by the darkness for so long that that's all we know. All we know is dark. All we know is the pain. All we know is the sin. All we know is the brokenness. But I'm telling you right now that Jesus makes the darkness tremble. When we invite Jesus into that moment, that's when we'll find freedom. Because darkness actually doesn't just vanish, it actually trembles. The darkness is scared of Jesus. The darkness is scared. It trembles. The, the, the Jesus makes the devil shake in his boots. the Holy Spirit fills you, darkness vanishes. You know, one thing that we've been, we're going to be doing this, this, uh, this series is doing a takeaway every week. And so our takeaway today is that Jesus makes the darkness tremble. He is the light of the world. That's who he is. He says, I'm the light of the world. I love that verse. Maybe we can go back to that verse real quick. I'm the light of the world. John 8, 12. I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Some of us, we, we've almost been dead for so long. And you say, hey, the light will bring you life. I will bring you the life that you have been looking for. Jesus is the light of the world. We've been in some of us the darkness for so long, but darkness cannot exist when light is present. All that darkness is, is the absence of light. So when light comes in, darkness flees. Darkness and light cannot coexist. When light enters, darkness trembles. I'm going to ask everyone to stand with me in this moment. I'm just going to pray, and then our team is going to lead us in one last song. And it's, This is one of my favorite songs. And it's called Tremble, and in this, it, the chorus is just simply, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing this song together. Father, I just pray that today light enters every dark part of where we're at. God, I pray for your light to, to just take over the darkest parts of our soul, of our heart. That you fill us with your light right now in Jesus' name. Everyone in this place, fill us with your light. Fill us with your life. God, I thank you that your grace is so sufficient for all of us. That your grace is so powerful. God, today we pursue you. And God, we thank you that darkness trembles in Jesus' name. So let's sing this song with our team.